Hello there friends and welcome. This is a guide for how to quickly gain power with your faith based caster, so prophets and so on. With all of the mechanics you need to know to make your caster viable in the early game, so that later on you have enough power to easily take on any of the challenges the game has to offer as you find new gear and spells. First let's get started with some pretty basic mechanics for your faith spellcaster. For your starter class I recommend you go with prophet, as it is, well, the most classic cleric or miracle incantation class of them all. For keepsake, go with the golden seed to give you an extra flask charge which helps a lot in the early game for FP management. First, just like with my sorcery guide, it's important to talk about flask allocation, so from any grace, choose flasks and then allocate flask charges. This lets you change the ratio between your hit points restoring flask and also your FP ones. As a spellcaster, ideally we want to focus at the early game at the very least. On our FP flasks, you can leave just one for your hit points flask and later change this if you prefer. Especially because we not only have the heal spell to restore hit points, but can also later get a regeneration spell, which reduces our reliance on the hit points flask. Now let's talk about the main spellcasting mechanics. First we have spell chaining. For example, after you first cast your spell, there will be a long casting time, but so long as you keep pressing R1 after that, notice we can swiftly cast the spell again and again way faster. So it can certainly be useful, because it will reduce your casting time for further castings, especially for the spells that take long. Now let's talk about another pretty important mechanic for a spellcaster, spell charging. So by default to cast a spell you just have to press R1, like this. We dealt 368 damage against the enemy with the shield. Now, if you actually keep R1 pressed as you're casting your spell, you then charge it for longer, which results in higher casting time, but at the same time, you also deal way more damage. So now we were able to one-shot the same enemy, instead of leaving them alive with a little bit of health. You should certainly consider using spell charge against packs of enemies and such, or enemies that aren't very fast. At the start, you only have access to the heal spell and also catch flame. Heal is pretty self-explanatory, but it does have somewhat slow casting time and leaves you open to enemy attacks. Catch flame, on the other hand, is a rather spammable, close-range spell that deals surprisingly good amounts of damage, unless we are dealing with a moving enemy like the knight on horseback here. It can be hard to hit them with a close-range spell like catch flame. It's still great for close-range enemies that don't move around much like honestly most of the early game enemies. And you can even stagger some enemies by repeatedly casting it. But it is a very close range spell and ideally we also want a ranged spell to complement our spell casting, which is what you are going to get right now, to enhance our early gameplay. And for that we need to unlock the first incantation seller of the game. And there is a very simple way of reaching round table hold, which is where our merchant is, without having to fight the first boss of Stormvale Castle. So notice this area here to the east of the castle with the broken bridge. You can actually go down this bridge, right here, then just keep moving to the right side, then just keep going up. Now to the right side here, keep moving upwards, you can skip the wolf enemies that will soon appear. And here we are, our first three Urnia of the Lake Bonfire. So simply rest here now, and they made them appear to take you to round table hold. And right here we can unlock our first Miracles oh, Merchant. I see. Welcome. Ideally you certainly want to buy Flame Sling first which is the equivalent of the Fireball spell from the Soul series. Flame Sling is going to be a first ranger spell to complement your close range Catch Flame spell. So you don't have to be close to the enemies to attack them. And it can hit multiple enemies, so long as they are close to one another when the Fireball hits them. Inside Round Table Hold we can also get our first Faith scaling weapon. Just be careful before doing this because you will be invaded by a hostile NPC. So try to do it without having any runes on your character. So if you die, there's no consequence. So drop down the main balcony here at the center. Then proceed to the left. This door here now. This other door. And here we are. 
the Cypher Pata. It is a faith scaling fist weapon, so you do more damage the higher your faith. Also, remember you can actually dual wield your newly found faith scaling fist weapon, so when one handing, we just do attacks like this. Now, if you press Y or triangle and then R1, notice we are now dual wielding our fists, so we can do a quicker flurry of attacks for more damage, of course. Another great purchase for your early level Prophet or Faith Caster is the Heater Shield from the Twin Husk Merchant because it does actually have 100% physical guard damage negation. Also, it only requires 10 strength and as a Prophet, well, we already start with 11. Now that we already have our Fireball spell, it's time to get the truly best of the early game spells in the game, the Lightning ones. You have two ways of getting to the area we need. If you have already unlocked the Artist Shack Grace, way north from the first Learning of the Lakes Grace, then all you have to do is head south a little bit to the main road, and there in the distance you'll find the Golden Knight that we have to defeat, patrolling the road. If not, then you'll have to reach the area marked with the blue icon here, by going all the way north from the lake facing Cliffs Bonfire, which we have already unlocked through this guide, until we reach the Artist's Shack, you'll have to go to the Lyurnia of the Lakes area. From the highway north, Grace, which is, well, just north of the first one we get here, and that we have already unlocked. So just keep following the road, past the little lake here, and you'll find the Golden Knight we need to defeat again. He isn't really hard on horseback with, let's say, the fireball spell, it's very easy to just lob fireballs at him from range. What you want to do is basically circle the knight while on horseback, bait one attack and then throw your fireball. While always keeping the distance of course. When charging your spells, always remember to turn towards the enemy as you lob your fireball, otherwise you're going to miss them. So turn now and then throw your fireball. You can charge when your back is turned, but be sure to turn towards them when throwing. So there we are. The Dragon Coat Prayer Book. Now all you have to do is give it to Brother Corhin here at Round Table Hold. So give Prayer Book. <laughs> That's it's a work of heresy. No from the Earth tree. And now we can get our classic Lightning Spear spell, Honed Bolt 2 and also Electrify Armament, so that's three pretty neat spells from just a single book. Honed Bolt has somewhat high casting time, but it can hit enemies that are close to one another, just like this. It does have a small area of effect, and you can of course charge it. A nice thing about Honed Bolt is because the bolt will strike the enemy from above, it doesn't have a projectile, so it can be a lot easier to hit the enemy. For example, even if my back is turned against this giant here, I can still hit him with Honed Bolt just fine, even without needing to turn towards him. Lightning Spear, on the other hand, is your classic single target, decently fast casting, high damage spell. Perfect for bosses and other enemies that you have to defeat fast. Now let's talk about how to get the best faith and incantation talismans for our Prophet even at the very early game. The first one is Faithful Canvas Talisman, which will increase the power of all of your incantation spells, no matter if they are fire, lightning, beast or dragon magic. Getting it is easy but can be a bit tricky, so I have a video linked to the side here on how you can do it just fine at the start of the game. But to keep it short, you have to go to the Celia Crystal Tunnel area, the same deadly place that you get teleported from by opening the chest in the Dragon Burnt Ruins. Once inside the mine, you'll have to rush past the enemies because they can be very powerful. And at the end of the mine, you'll find your very useful talisman next to two centipede enemies. I do recommend you do this without any runes on your character, because you will probably end up dying a few times. This way you won't lose any runes that you can't afford to. For a second amazing incantation talisman, we have the Two Fingers Heirloom, which increases your faith stat by 5 whole points, pretty good for the early game. To get this talisman, simply head to the Purified Ruins area in the Urnia of the Lakes region, 
which is also pretty close to the Liurnia Highway north grace, north from the first grace you find in the region. Once you reach the ruins, head right here to the side, enter the section here, and remember to destroy the planks so we can proceed down the stairs. Open the door, and our amulet is right at this chest. Two fingers heirloom. Now when it comes to your main seal, I honestly suggest you just keep to the finger seal for the early game. The faith scaling isn't the best, but honestly the same is true for the other seals, and just upgrade it through the blacksmith in round table hold. As far as armor, I haven't really been able to find any good armor for divine casters and prophets, at least that you can find early game with ease. But what really matters for us are our seal, which we already have, our fist weapon that scales with our faith, and of course our two very powerful talismans. Armor can be up to you at least in the early game. Now let's talk about stat allocation for our faith caster. I do recommend you get something like 15 vigor at the start. Yes, I do realize you can just not get hit, but just like with my sorcery guide, this is for beginner players and so on. Even if you are used to the other Souls game, chances are you still have to learn the enemy patterns. Some points invested into Vigor can highly help reduce unnecessary deaths by giving you an extra layer of hit points. Second, we have to focus on Faith, of course, because it is our main casting stat that directly empowers our spells, and some Faith scaling weapons too. I recommend you, for the early game, you stop at somewhere like 25, but you can also go for 30 because the faith scaling fist weapon we find actually does require 30 faith to use. So if you want to use it the earliest, you will need 30 faith. The last of the points should go into mind. I actually spent some points into Archangel here because I wanted to test the early dragon spells which aren't really that useful. So 15 vigor first, something like 25 faith, and the rest of the points into mind to increase your FP. Although you might also consider skipping mind, depending on how easy you find to manage your FP flasks. And there's plenty of graces spread throughout the maps too. And of course, after level 30 or so, you can always increase the rest of the points as you see fit. This is mostly to empower your character in the early game, as to be able to progress through the open world and the later areas. To get our last but very powerful incantation, you have to defeat the Crucible Knight boss at the Stormhill Evergaol area right here, which is pretty easy to access by just heading south from the Stormhill Shack, Grace. So just enter Evergaol. The boss can be tough, but because we already have our very powerful lightning spells and also our incantation boosting talisman, we should be able to defeat him just fine. Start with a charged lightning spear for some good initial damage. Now you can either block his attacks with your shield and keep backing away as to bait openings so you can then use your lightning bolt, or you can also break the lock and run away as you get more distance between you and him. So block the wing attack, then dodge away so you don't get hit with the tail that he uses sometimes. After you defeat him, you'll get a very powerful aspect of the Crucible Tail Incantation, which can be an amazing spell for dealing with packs of enemies. You can actually charge it for another, a second Tail Swing, I mean. Just like this. And the damage is pretty good and will stagger enemies too. Just be careful because it can have a high casting time. Faith casters can also acquire the Beast spells, such as Bestial Sling and also Bestial Vitality. I already have a guard link to the side here, explaining how you can easily get these spells because it is a multi-step process, so please be sure to check that out. And I also have a guide for Dragon Magic linked to the side here, although for the early game I wouldn't really bother with it. As far as Dragon Fire, for example, which does decent area of effect damage, Aspect of the Crucible Tail is a lot better, which is the one I have chosen for this guide. I have heard there are some pretty powerful dragon spells later in the game though. Now for my preferred spell allocation in the early game as a divine, Faithcaster, well, first we have Honed Bolt, 
which can deal some pretty decent area of effect damage if the enemies are close. And because it casts a bolt right above the enemy's head, it can make it easier to hit enemies that are fast or moving enemies like the mounted ones. The second is Lightning Spear, of course, for the very high single target damage. Third aspect of the Crucible, Teo, for very high area of effect close range damage. And lastly, Bestial Vitality, to give your character regeneration, which can help a lot against some enemies, especially when you cast it before tough battles like boss battles. Now let's talk about memory slots. To actually cast your spells, you first need to memorize them in the slots you have available. The only way to increase memory slots is by having memory stone items. Your stats don't really increase your slots. There's two that you can find pretty early in the game. The first from the Twin Husk Merchants in the round table hold area, and the second through a little puzzle that I'm going to explain to you now. It lies here in the Weeping Peninsula area. Another very easy area to get to, you start the game here, all you have to do is head south, cross the Bridge of Sacrifice, very easy to do on horseback, keep heading further south, reach the Castle Morn Rampart Bonfire, <laughs> Grace I mean, just move a little bit east to where I have my blue marker set, so let's go there. So the puzzle is seek three wise beasts, one turtle will be at the entrance, so right here, I already defeated it, the other behind this bushes here. As for the last turtle, we have to go to this little pond here. And it's actually invisible at the middle here. And there we go. The seal on the rise opened, so we can now enter the tower, go to the top floor and loot the memory stone from inside the chest. Also, don't forget about the power of spirit summons for your faith caster. Your summons can actually take a lot of the heat away from you, by taking the enemy's attention, which gives you breathing room to cast spells and also heal if you need it. Also, some of the summons like the skeleton ones, which you will get through this guide when you go for the beast spells, they will actually revive upon death, just like the enemy skeletons, so long as the boss or enemy doesn't keep whacking on them while they are in their recovery time, they will be brought back to full hit points, which is great to keep the enemy distracted even further. To cast your summon spells, you will need first to acquire the Spirit Calling Bell item. And I already have a guide link to the side here on how to do it. Now with all of that out of the way, you should certainly be able to easily defeat the bosses of Stormvale Castle and also truly experience the open world Elder Ring has to offer. I'm sure you can eventually find even better spells and also gear for your character, but the ones you found through this guide will be able to carry you far. And remember, I also have a guide for how to quickly become a powerhouse, but in this case for sorcery casters, link to the side here. Please be sure to post in the comments anything you think I might have missed, or upgrades you find useful for a character like this. Alright everyone, so this was it for my faith caster guide. I hope I've managed to properly explain to you how to play with your faith caster so you can have a pretty easy time in the early game. If you found this guide useful, then please remember to like, subscribe and even become a member to access some exclusive perks. Thank you for watching and see you next time friends!